Hello and welcome to your extremely basic introduction to Premiere Pro CS3. So when we open Premiere Pro, we have an option to create a new project or open an existing project. We're going to create a new project today. When you click on this one, you'll be asked to specify your presets. So that's what kind of video format you want to end up with um, at the end of your movie. We always go into DV PAL for most things in Australia and uh, widescreen 48 kilohertz. I'm going to browse and make sure that whenever I save, I'm saving into my uh, external hard drive here because I need to keep this all together. Not in there, in here. I want to save it into this folder called Steph Movie. Okay. And I'll give it a name. Maybe it's an assignment. Okay. And here's the interface of Premiere Pro. So we've got a file bin up in the top left hand uh, corner. Then next door we have a source monitor. We have a timeline down here, the big one, where we build our story and a program monitor, which simply shows us what's going on here in the timeline. We're going to import some files to work with first of all. The easiest way to do that is to right click, I'm going to import, find that uh, external drive I mentioned earlier. And you can see these files up here, these are the ones Premiere created when I told it um, I would be saving into this folder. And that's where your auto save files will go. Alright, so these are my three um, <coughs> files I'm going to work with. I'm going to open those. Okay, so once you've got your files in your file bin, you need to look through them and find which bits you want to use. So let's just say I want to use some of this jet ski footage. To get started, drag that little icon and drop it into that space, that grey space in the source monitor. And you can see it, it appears there. Alright, once we're in the source monitor, we can um, use our play and our stop toggles to have a look through we can simply grab the playhead like so. You can use this little toggle back and forth, however you want to do it. You need to look through your footage, find which bits you want to use um, and then when you've found them we need to do what's called an in and out point. So let's just say the clip I want to use is here. Maybe it's just before that boat comes into view. Okay, I want my clip to start here. So I found it in the footage and now I'm going to press I on the keyboard. I for in. It's also down here as well. Alright, you can see I've got a, a blue highlighted area now. And I want to finish that clip just before it changes to that other scene. So it's going to be about here. So I'm going to go ahead and press O now for out. And there it is next to the other little button there, set out point. And now you can see my blue highlighted area is really quite small. So now I've selected the clip I want to use um, in my movie. I can simply drag it down onto the timeline and start editing it further in there if I want. So I just click on the picture itself, not down here but up here on the picture, click on the picture and drag that one down into the timeline and drop it in there. You can see a little icon there. So now we're in the timeline and if I want I can play my movie so far and have a look at what it looks like. So I can stop and I can toggle the same um, same buttons that you had in the source monitor apply in the um, program monitor. I can also use this playhead to uh, scrub through my footage down on the timeline. Alright, let's put another clip on here. Maybe I want to use some of Horsey's. Drag that into the source monitor. 
Find a bit I want to use. Let's say it's this bit before the horses run on. And after they run off. There's my in and out points. Drag it down and I've dropped it onto the timeline. So this is how we essentially start to build our, our story. We find the different sections um, of our footage and we, we specify those in the source monitor with in and out points and then we drop them down on the timeline. And you can see now if I play my timeline up in here, you can see the end of the jet ski clip um, and then it should, yep, cut over to horsies and we can see it playing through there. So you found the main bits that you want to use up in here um, and then we can do further editing down here in the timeline if we want. I'm just going to zoom in so I can see that a bit clearer. There we go. Easy way to zoom is to just hold down your Alt key on the keyboard and use the scroll wheel on your mouse. If you don't have a scroll wheel, you can just use this little um, zoom thing in here to go in and out. Alright, so here's our tools down here on the right. Uh, we've got a pointer tool, it's just a selection tool, and that will let you move your clips around. It will also lengthen and shorten your clips. So if I decided uh, I, that the horsey's clip needs to be a little bit bigger, instead of going up here and setting a new in and out point, I can actually just extend it a little bit if I want. And same from the other side, of course. We've got a rolling edit tool. So if I decided that um, I wanted a little bit less of jet ski, if I just use my normal selection tool here, and I said, oh, I just want that a bit shorter. Suddenly I've got a big gap here. And what does that mean? That means if I play it, that gap is just blank. Um, it's just black space, black time. All right, so instead of doing that, I can use this um, ripple edit tool. Sorry, I think I called it rolling before. Ripple edit tool. And then if I decrease jet ski, it'll simply move horses along to, to match it. On the other hand, if I wanted a little, let's say, a little more jet ski and a little less horsies, I could just get this one here, which is the ripple edit tool, and I could extend jet ski and shorten horsies. We've also got a rate stretch tool here, um, which will speed clips up or slow them down. So if I squish horsies up right down in right down into a small space there, it'll play it in faster motion. You can see just the end of that was quite fast there. Um, and likewise, if you stretch it right out, you're going to have uh, slow motion. We can see that up here. Okay, the last tool I'm going to show you is this one here. It's the razor tool. and It does exactly what you think it would do. It simply chops your clips. So if I wanted, maybe I actually don't want when that boat comes in here. So maybe I'll just chop that. Get my selection tool, select it and delete it. 